Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to use one of the brand new QNAP JBot expansions in your backup strategy. Everyone should have multiple tiers to their backup strategy and if you don't then my friend you are on a tightrope. Having all your data inside a NAS is quite useful but once you start backing up all your mobile phones and your external drives and your PCs, your Mac, your whatever to the NAS, if you delete any of those files off of one of those client devices, again mobiles, laptops, whatever, your NAS is no longer a backup. Your NAS is the repository of the only area that that data exists and you don't have a backup. So one of the ways in which you can back up among many is to utilize an expansion device. Connecting a JBOD expansion device to your NAS and synchronizing the NAS with an external device connected via a single cable. It's not the only way to back up. There are so many ways in which you can back up. And one of the ways to uh, see all of those options is with a tool from QNAP known as Hybrid Backup Sync 3. It's, uh, I've done lots of videos on this. And today we're going to be utilizing this tool to show you how to synchronize your NAS with your expansion. And also throughout this video, I'll also talk about some of the other ways in which you can create a multi-tiered backup strategy. But moving forward, let's talk about what you're going to need to do to set this up. First and foremost, you're going to need an expansion device. Now, I say an expansion, most of the steps in today's video can be uh, replicated for cloud backups, for NAS to NAS backups, and NAS to USB backups. But I'm focusing on an external expansion device today because the TL series from QNAP has been released and a number of you are using it to mirror the storage in your NAS and therefore have a nice fast acting backup strategy because the majority of these are connected with connections like USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second, or ones like the one we're using today, the D800S, is an 8 bay that utilizes um, SAS external con connectivity with SAS cabling and uh, an included SAS card to make a much faster accessible external device to communicate with your NAS. So what I've done is I've taken one of these NASes and I've populated it with WD RAID hard drives. I'm creating a RAID 5, which hasn't finished. And don't worry, you don't have to wait for the RAID, finished, uh, RAID 5 to finish to begin the steps of this installation. Though I do recommend, if you are going to go ahead and do the steps in today's video, maybe make sure that you've got the RAID completed and optimized first. Now, I'm using OBS in the background here to record stuff, so I apologize if there's the odd um, slight slowdown in the recording. And I am accessing this now as remotely, due to lockdown taking place in the UK here during COVID-19 outbreaks. So um, I am using a remote to remote access interface, so there might be an ever so slight lag, tiny. But I've set up both the QNAP NAS, that I've got my RAID 5 on here, and I've connected the expansion device here, that D800S, and I'm creating that RAID 5 inside, which is synchronizing here in the background, but it is still a RAID 5. Always make sure if you're going to do something like this to make sure you've got at least the same amount of storage in your expansion device as you have inside your primary storage. If you're going to be using versioning or um, overall backups where you can do just diff backups, which is when only the files that change are updated in the expansion, make sure the expansion has got at least 50% or even 100% more storage space available. Because as time wears on, you are going to fill that expansion up. So just make sure so that your backup routine is safe, that you have more space in the expansion device than you do in your NAS if you're going to be doing diff backups or um, time managed backups. So we've got the expansion set up. Next, you want to make sure you've got mapped network drives. And although you can do this with a series of iSCSIs, it is easier to do this with mapped network drives. I've got one mapped network drive here on the QNAP NAS for my um, the QNAP NAS internal storage. And I've created a, uh, a network drive, a shared folder here on my expansion NAS. Now that expansion NAS here, that's happening here in the background, this one has got that RAID 5 already preset up. To create a shared folder that can be mapped later on, just go to shared folder here, name the folder you want to name it, and just make sure you select the right volume. In my case, volume one is the NAS and volume two is the NAS expansion. And once you've created that and click create there, it will create this folder. Now, this folder can be mapped locally to your PC if you so choose, which allows you to then 
interact with this folder on your NAS and interact with the expansion. So if you see here, and again, this step, these steps aren't necessarily for you, but if you want to mount that NAS folder that you've created on your PC, you can do so here. But now we want to talk about backing up. So the next thing you want to do is in go to the App Center and install the application known as Hybrid Backup Sync 3. It's available straight away, it's completely free, and you just find it amongst the apps available from QNAP and click Install, and then click Open. Once you open the application, it will appear like this. And what you need to do from here is scroll down to Sync. Now you've got options here for different management of backups, but for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a sync task, where you're gonna be synchronizing two folders together each way. Now, what will happen here, you can do a two-way sync, where you've got two folders that are synchronized and identical, or a one-way sync, if you so choose, where it will synchronize a folder on A to a location on B. And, that's to and that way, only the changes in one, say the NAS side, will be affected onto the other and not the other way around. So if you choose to delete files from the backup, it won't affect the primary. Now, backup and restore is very, very similar to that. And again, you can do it as a, um, as a one-way or a two-way backup system. And depending on the type of backup that you want to action, this is where these two choices make a difference. If you want to do a periodic backup that will happen at a certain time of day or hour, select this option. If you want a live synchronization happening in real time, you choose the sync option. I'm gonna select the sync option because I want to go for something where the changes are near enough instantaneous. And again, you can set it up to be automatic or periodic if you so choose. If you select the one-way sync option like I'm going for, what you need to do first is select the folder. So we're gonna be utilizing a local NAS for this because the um, expansion is connected via um, a local connection. But if you want to do a NAS to NAS connection, select remote or external third-party server, select these. Alternatively, there's lots of support for third-party uh, cloud apps where you can connect to a cloud service for your backup. But today's video is about using the external JBOD expansion. So select local NAS. From there, click next, and it will ask you to select the folders that you want to sync both to and from. So on the local NAS, I want to select that shared folder that I created earlier. You can select the others if you choose, but for the sake of this video, I'm selecting that shared folder I created. Then click OK. On the target destination, you want to select the expansion. So again, click Add and select that expansion device, the D800 that I've gone for, that we've mounted on the other volume, which is via the external connection. Now this external um, expansion device is using that proprietary PCIe card to be connected, but your expansion may be connected via USB or more. If we make our way in, I'm going to select that expansion and click OK. And now we've selected both the target folder on the local NAS and the destination on that external device. You can do other mapped external volumes if you choose, but for now, we're just gonna go with this one way sync. Then we click next. From here, you can do a real-time synchronization where all changes are effective immediately or create scheduled ones for if you're worried about your network being busy. As we're utilizing a local connection, this is less of a worry. So I'm gonna go with real-time synchronization. Then we're gonna click next. And from here, we can apply filters to these files and folders if we so choose. So say you've got certain files that you don't care about synchronizing. So you're going to be synchronizing some files that are too big, some that are too small, or some files that you don't want synchronized to the backup for one reason or another. You can create different policies and filters that allow you to make sure certain types of files are always targeted and other types of files are not targeted. For now, we're gonna click next. And from there, the real-time synchronization has been completed. And that local folder on the NAS is gonna be backed up to the externally crea uh, created folder on the expansion. I'm gonna click Create. It's now created this job of synchronization. We can run the synchronization task first, although there's not much data to play with right now. So the synchronization shouldn't take too much time and will not take much data. The synchronization is now running in the background and what I'd like to do is to open up 
that network drive we created earlier. If we go into that network drive that we created on the NAS located here, what we can now do is dump some files into it. So let's open up this folder here. In the download folder, I'm now going to select a bunch of files. I'm going to copy those files locally on my PC, not within the NAS, and copy them into that destination. So it's now going to copy these files, which is all happening via 10 GBE. The PC that I'm utilizing for today's video is connected to this NAS via 10 GBE. So these speeds are what you will get if you're using a 10G connection. Internally within the NAS, the data is being handed when the synchronization takes place over that connection, that connected network interface card I showed you earlier. So as that transfer finishes there, we can see now that the shared folder on my PC has got a bunch of data dumped into it. If we leave this folder that we've created here and minimize it there, we can take a good look at the NAS. We can make our way into this folder here. We can see all of those files that I just interacted and uploaded onto the NAS via 10 GBE. If we go into the synchronized folder, we can see that it's already started synchronizing those files there in the background. Even though we haven't copied files into this directory, they're now already starting to show inside this synchronized drive. And the hyper backup happening in the background is now synchronizing those folders and files. And it's that straightforward. Now we're going to have a one-way sync always happening here in the background. So anything we do with that local folder here that we've mounted on the device is now going to be present on the NAS. And again, this doesn't just work if you're using map network drives. From this point forward, anything you enter into this folder here will appear in the synchronized folder here. And because we're creating a one-way synchronization, what will happen is if I delete these files from the expansion device, they will not affect this destination target here. And you can make sure that changes are only implemented on one end of the spectrum. But as you can see, the synchronization is completed. And without me copying these files manually, it is now synchronized between the local NAS and my externally connected JBOD expansion. And this has been how to use an expansion device and hybrid backup sync to synchronize your NAS with a locally connected expansion device. If you found this video helpful, do click like and click subscribe to learn more. And do check out Hybrid Backup Sync 3 for more options on how to create the perfect backup strategy for you and your data storage needs both at home and in business. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.